this tutorial, we're going to talk about how to add page transitions to a Gridsome site. And we'll do it right after this. Welcome back, friends. My name is Dan Vega. And if you're new to the channel, head over to danvega.dev and you can learn a little bit more about me as well as get links to all the different social networks I'm on, my YouTube channel, places to find all of my courses, and here you can sign up for my newsletter on the homepage. One thing you'll learn real quickly is that I love to learn and I love to teach others what I've learned. Uh, so hopefully there is something here to help you out on your journey of learning how to code. So more importantly, this website that you're looking at here is written in Gridsome. So Gridsome is a static site generator. So you can head over to gridsome.org and it's a static site generator written in Vue. So if you're in the Vue ecosystem and you want a static site, this is a great option. There are a whole ton of features which we're not gonna go, to in, go through in this video. Um, but I encourage you to read through the documentation there. I've had my blog on it for a little over a year and a half now and well, about a year and a half. And it is my blog has gotten up to almost 100,000 uh, page requests a, a month. Uh, it's a little bit down from there now, but at its height, that's where we were. Um, so I'm really proud of that. And I'm really proud of Gridsome, just everything that it has enabled me to do. I've moved off of WordPress over to Gridsome and have just been so happy since I've done that. Anyways, that's enough of a pitch for Gridsome. I am not being paid by them. This is not sponsored by them. But hey, if uh, you know, they are a great uh, product. They're a great uh, bunch of developers working on this product, so I'm happy to support them. So what we're here to talk about today is um, page transitions. So when you first create a Gridsome site, there is no app.view like there is in a normal view project. But they added a feature where you can basically override their app.view. And what we're going to do is we're going to go through this documentation and then we're going to go over to my site and we're going to uh, go ahead and update. Uh, we're going to use, we're going to create a new app.view. We'll add some page transitions and then we'll see what that looks like. So if you look on my current site now, if you flip between pages, so as I go to blog or I go to newsletter or I go back to home or I go to contact, you could see that we're just kind of cycling through the pages. There's no real transition. I want to create some a little bit better of an effect. So when you switch pages, um, it just looks a little bit cleaner. OK, so that's kind of what we're doing here today. It's really easy to do. Um, but we'll go through it together and hopefully we'll go ahead and push this live and, and see how it looks. All right, so here we are in the documentation for overriding app.views. So the app.view file is the main component that wraps all of your pages and templates. And you can override the default by having your own app.view in the source directory. Overriding it's useful if you want to have a layout that is shared across all your pages or if you want to have some kind of transition component around the router view. So that's exactly what we want to do today. So if you've ever built a um, traditional view application, you know that there's an app.view and if you use the router, you probably stick something like router view in app.view and that's what changes your different routes. And in a normal view app, you can just wrap that in a transition and you get this nice little transition between um, as you kind of switch routes. So uh, there's a note here, you must restart Gridsome Develop after adding app.view. So if you're already running and you go ahead and add this, you'll need to restart. Um, so adding global metadata. So the default app.view component inserts the site name and description as global metadata. So you can see down here we have some meta info and it will return this information. Uh, you need to insert those yourself when you have a custom uh, app.view. So I think the easiest thing to do is to just go ahead and copy this and we'll use this as the template for our own app.view. And all we're doing is wrapping that router view with a transition. So then there's also some information in here about sharing a layout across all of your pages. Um, I can't do that. I actually have a couple of different layouts and I actually, I don't know why, um, it's just kind of how my site has evolved, but I need to get rid of that and clean some things up. So maybe I'll come back to this, but then there's also a section on page transitions. So you're, again, you're just wrapping the router view 
with transition and you can read more about transitions over on the view website. So again, this is just a view feature that allows you to have transitions. All right, so here we are in my site and the first thing I'm actually going to do is create a new feature branch for this uh, just because I don't think I'm actually gonna merge this in yet because I do need to make some other updates to my website first, but we'll talk through that as we get to it. So I'm gonna go ahead and get check out a new branch and we'll call this page transitions and we're there. So let's go ahead and close this. And so what I'm going to do right in source is go ahead and create this app.view. And I'm just going to copy this right here. And let's just go new file, app.view, and we'll paste that in there. So our site will work as is right now. Everything is going to be uh, the same as it is because this is basically what the app.view and gridsome looks like underneath the hood. We're just taking this as a starting template to go ahead and make some modifications. So what I want to do is actually go ahead down and create some styles and then we'll talk about wrapping the router view with our transition. So we're going to go ahead and style, we can go ahead and scope these and in the style block we're going to create a few transitions. So we're going to start with fade enter active and fade enter, or I'm sorry, fade leave active. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to transition on the opacity and change it to 0 0.5 seconds. So that is the, um, the delay of that. And then we're gonna ease in and out. So once we have that, we also wanna declare a couple other styles. We want fade, enter, and we want fade, leave, active. And so if you're not sure what these are, don't worry. I still don't know these all that well. Uh, we're just changing the opacity to zero when we either fade enter or fade leave active. So these are all following a naming convention. Again, I'll leave the link to the transition documentation below. But basically you're creating some CSS transitions following this naming convention. And this name right here, fade, is what we're going to put in our transition. So now what we can do is just go ahead and wrap our router view in a transition tag and we're going to give it a name of fade. And so if we go ahead and wrap this around, that should give us what we want. So what I'm going to do is go ahead and run this. So I'm going to say grid sum develop and we're going to go over to localhost 8080. Okay, so now when our page is set up here, if I want to switch over to about or contact, you see that little fade that kicks in? So that is the transition at work. Now, you probably notice a couple little things about it. Like you can see one, I have to fix this in my current site. I get I basically threw together this theme and Recently, I've been taking a look at it, and I'm going to be doing a couple upcoming videos on redesigning this. I'm not redesigning, but I'm re, I'm building it from the ground up using CSS and Tailwind, uh, two different builds, uh, just to kind of show you the differences. But I found a lot of issues with this. One, I don't like this footer just kind of being there. I'd like it to be, you know, on um, uh, on the bottom of the page, even on pages with shorter content. And so whenever you have different heights like this, when you're going through transition, you see a little jerk there. There are some things that are gonna happen. And to be honest, I wouldn't even use a fade. I think I'd try to like do in some, some more complex animations. I might want like a fade in um, zoom or like th there are just more um, animations that I could see doing. Now, if you're very good with uh, transitions and animations and keyframing, that may be easy for you. That is not a strong suit of mine. And because of that, I'm going to lean on a library today, but I would love to hear from you guys if 
there are any other libraries that you use for this or learning materials because this is something I would definitely like to get better at. And I will continue to work on that. And if I come across some things, I will definitely share that with you guys. So what we're going to look at today is another um, animation library. And I actually picked this up from Gary Simon of Corsetro, who did a video on the same thing, and that is Animate CSS. And so if we go over to Animate CSS, we can see that we can pick all of these different animations. So maybe I wanted to fade in left. So you can see it fade in, it fades in, and it slides in. So those are really cool, and I think I want to use something like that. So to do that, um, I'm going to get rid of these styles here. I'm going to get rid of, um, actually, that we can keep that if we want. So down here in the styles, what I'm going to do is just go ahead and grab the CDN here. I'm grabbing this off screen. So I'm just going to go ahead and import that from the CDN. So that is going to bring in that animate CSS library. And then what we can do is any of these names in here are the names of the animation. So to make this work, I'm going to go into my transition and we just need to go ahead and add the transition for each um, transition uh, state. So like uh, there is an enter active class and the animate animated is what you are saying like this is the library that I'm pulling this from. And then the name of the uh, animation is fade in left. Oh, did I not fade in left? So that should work. And then I'm going to go leave uh, active class and we'll call this animated fade out right. So that's saved. So now let's go ahead and one other thing you may want to change is the mode. Uh, so the mode we're going to go ahead and say is out in. So let's go ahead and see if that's done anything. Uh, we're going to need to run that again. Okay, so if we go over to about, oh, we're on about. So if we go to contact, and you can kind of see what's going on here. So while this is working, this isn't really an ideal uh, transition. And it's not really the transition's fault. It's really the way that I designed the site. So if we go back over to the docs here in overriding app, one thing they mention is that you can go ahead and have your layout in here too. So we could have our layout and then our router view. And if we wanted to, then we can actually do our transitions just around the view itself. So if things like this blue bar and this nav were in the main layout and the only transition was on the page itself, that would probably look a lot better. So let's head back over. We're going to go ahead and stop this. And I'm just going to make a few changes here. So first, let's go into a page like uh, About. So if we go into About, you'll see that it has this Layout tag here. So I'm going to go ahead and get rid of that. And we'll do it in Contact too. And again, we're just going to do this for these two pages. Uh, after making this video, I realized that I do need to clean some things up before I can go ahead and roll this back into master. So now back in app, now what I can do is I can go ahead and use my main layout. So there's my main layout. And what I want to do is I'm actually transitioning just around the router view itself. So if I go ahead and save that. Let's go ahead and run grid some develop and see what this looks like. So if I refresh this and now I'm on the about page, if I head over to contact, you can see that the top where I have that blue bar and the navigation, that is not moving. We're just transitioning in the view itself. So that, or the router view. So that's really nice. That is a much better approach. So this is something you have to think about depending on, on how your Gridsum site is set up. Um, I'm in the middle of actually redesigning, not redesigning, same design, but just cleaning up the HTML. So I know that I'm going to have a consistent layout throughout my site. And that will allow me to go ahead and easily transition between views. Now, I also 
have cleaned this up in another repo, which I'm going to talk about in another video, but I have that position on the, the, the actual footer now. So um, I think that is really all I wanted to share um, as far as being able to override app.view to give you a couple of things. Really, you can include that layout then, and you can also add some transitions to your views to give your site a little bit more of a pizzazz, a little bit more style to it. All right, question of the day. Are you using a static site generator? And if so, which one? Obviously, Gridsum is one of my favorite static site generators. Really great project. Uh, go check it out if you haven't yet. And I think that is where we will leave it. So if you enjoyed this video and got value out of it, please give me a thumbs up. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And as always, friends, happy coding.